أما بعد كمدد مسلم معشر المؤمنين with Allah's light with his prophet's influence we will continue to dispel the dark corners in our minds the ambiguity in some of our history and the misunderstandings among us those that are traceable to the opening chapters that go back to the years and the times that followed Allah's Prophet and Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his forever and evermore. At the time when the best possible political behavior was exemplified by the four administrations that followed the passing away of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam During those critical years in which there was a transition from a political standard that drew on a sincerity and a devotion to Allah and His Prophet, we all together should see that there was a qualitative change that set into our early history on the decision-making level of the Ummah. And now for the first time we have a monarchy that is making decisions for the Muslims. This monarchy parted in a breakaway attitude from the principles and the values and the standards and the strategy of Allah's Prophet عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ And it had given itself, the monarchy, had given itself an air of legitimacy. Obviously it needed that to survive. The first source or the first channel of this legitimacy that was going from now on to be played up was going to be expanded and publicized had to do with a hadith that is attributed to Allah's Prophet in which he is reported to have said إن هذا الأمر في قريش لا يعاديهم أحد إلا كبه الله على وجهه ما أقاموا الدين Another parallel 
purported hadith which is taken as a an authentic and a common hadith it is reported that the Prophet alayhi as-salatu was-salam said al-a'immatu min Quraysh okay what do these two hadiths what are they saying to us And remember, these hadiths have lived on and they still continue to circulate in all the Islamic literature from whichever perspective you are approaching it. The first hadith, and they ask you, when is a hadith valid and when is it not valid? And we will put these hadiths and see if they will measure up to the verifier of validities, and that is Allah's incontrovertible, everlasting truth in the Qur'an. So the first hadith that is widely quoted and was taken all the way back then as being a source and a channel of legitimacy for the first monarchy or monarchical system in Islam. It says, إِنَّ هَذَا الْأَمْرَ فِي قُرَيْشِ This is in reference to the leadership of the Muslims. Al-Amr here is in reference to the leadership of the Muslims. So it is reported to us through the Qutb through the books of Hadith, that this position of leadership belongs to Quraysh. And then the Hadith goes on to say, anyone who expresses an opposition or an animosity to this, meaning to the leadership being inherently in Quraysh, will Allah will cause him to fall face down. مَا عَدَاهُ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا كَبَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ Then the final qualifier ما أقاموا فيكم الدين as long as these leaders from Quraysh are responsible for the substantiation or the established order of this deed. Okay? This was widely quoted, particularly quoted, when there was a shift from a particular standard of governance during the time of the Khilafah to now a new form of government, which is a dynasty, a kingship, and a monarchy. And so was the case with the adjunct hadith that is quoted, Al-A'immatu min Quraysh. This is more specific and more succinct, in which we are told that the Prophet is reported to have said, the Imams, meaning the leaders of the Muslims, come from Quraysh. Al-A'immatu min Quraysh. 